Welcome to SOAR and our September series on family, uh, on, on uh, strategies, on, on our behavior management guide tips for families. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about family strategies, 10 tips to keep the family from going bonkers. As always, you're welcome to put questions in the uh, question or in the chat bar. We will be monitoring those throughout the webinar. Uh, this, uh, this series is based on information that we initially created to develop for our instructors working with kids. And then we began to realize that so many of the strategies that we utilize here with some mild tweaking could certainly continue to be a support and resource for you at home. So without further ado, let's find out how to keep from going bonkers at home. All right, uh, strategy number one, discuss in advance how to handle difficult situations because consistency between the adults is critical. Now this is true whether you are, uh, you and your partner are together or if the children are, are living in separate households, co-parenting is a critical aspect to making sure that our kids understand what the expectations are. We have a base camp in Wyoming. We have a base camp in North Carolina. Uh, we have a program in Florida and in Colorado, uh, as well as the Adirondacks down in uh, Belize, Costa Rica, and, uh, and Peru. And one of the things that you find amongst all of our programs are the fact that we have a set of structures and systems that we employ regardless of where we are that is consistent. And one of the things that we teach our instructors is that they should talk before they deal with particularly difficult uh, behaviors or challenges and find ways to make sure that they have a united front. So I encourage you to discuss in advance how to handle those difficult situations. Uh, you know, one of the other things that we know kids are really prone to do is they'll ask you a question and if they don't like the answer, what do they do? That's right. They go ask the other parent or the other adult the same question. Uh, and, and often, if, if your kids are anything like mine, my kids will say something like, hey, mom said it would be okay if you say it's okay. So they front load me. Well, that's not at all what mom said. Mom said, go ask your dad. And, uh, and so they, they will just keep bouncing back and forth between us until they get the answer they want. So don't allow to get your kids to divide and conquer that way. It's your job to divide and conquer uh, and, and make sure that you guys are on the same page. Uh, if you don't agree, have a conversation about that. Do that in private. Do that away from the kids. But always, you are, united, you are a united front. You are a unified, uh, absolute, um, unfazable, unmovable, uh, um, committed to consistency. Uh, because if you are not, then the road gets really rocky. And... Uh, and, and sometimes that means that the kids get what they want, but it also means that they can't have uh, a structure in place that they can count and rely on. And so that consistency between the two of you or the three of you or the four of you is just so critical to the success of raising resilient children. Uh, we use, if, if you've attended any of our, uh, your kids have attended any of our programs, you know about our roll cards. And we've outlined those responsibilities and we rotate them on a regular basis. Now, what I've done here is I've given you a quick snapshot of our roles. Uh, I, um, I did go over this in more depth in a uh, earlier webinar, uh, you know, called, um, you know, how to manage uh, kids at home, you know, the sore way uh, or something like that. And um, so these are, these are kind of some of the roles we have. Yoda. Uh, the leader of the day, uh, and their job is to make sure everyone else is doing their job. Uh, and as a parent, when what I would do is I would work with whatever child was the assigned the Yoda job that day, and I would ask them questions like, you know, what what needs to be happening now? Who's in charge of that? How can you help make that happen? Uh, should you call, you know, should you call a family meeting? And we're going to talk a lot a lot about family meetings here in just a moment. Uh, the chef, what does the chef do? Well, the chef cooks the food. What does the Captain Planet do? Well, they keep the living areas clean. They make sure the table is set. They, you know, they, they, they keep things tidy. What does the Sherpa do? 
The Sherpa is the lousiest job of the day. They're the ones who have to do, clean the dirty dishes. And when possible, uh, I like to have somebody else help. Uh, what does the jester do? If you've got plenty of family members and you want to have more roles, the jester, is, they're the one who just keeps things fun. Uh, they're, they're assigned, you know, what's the joke of the day? Uh, as long as it's appropriate. Uh, they're, uh, they're, they're also, you know, they might uh, manage family game night or they get to pick the movie that the family watches that night. We've got one called Godzilla, and Godzilla makes sure that everyone stays hydrated. And I understand that that is less important at home than it is when, when, when kids are in the woods with us, but it's still important. You know, why is it important that we stay hydrated? Because we are less grumpy when we are hydrated. We are less prone to be irritable when we are hydrated. We stay healthier when we are hydrated. Uh, and then the scribe, they, uh, their job would be that they take pics. They're, they're the social media person for the day. They might post a, a tweet. They, they, they might post a picture on Instagram. Uh, and so, you know, their job is to sort of present the family to the world on that given day. And then uh, depending if you're a family of seven or if you're just a family of three, you can combine some of these roles and mix and match them. Have fun with it. Uh, I'm going to tell you a quick story. Uh, a young man who I'm still very, very close with named Andrew uh, attended many, many courses with me back when I was actually in the field doing courses. I, I believe we went to Belize together. We went to Costa Rica together. We spent some time in Florida together. Uh, and, and he and I talk probably once a month, once every other month. Uh, and he came up with this really fun idea to travel the country doing um, blog posts and videos of adventure opportunities that are 30 minutes away from urban settings. And so he, he, he bought a, a little camper, got a crew together to, to, to kind of go with him. And they realized very quickly that they were, they were struggling when it came to responsibilities. And Andrew had the solution. He said, aha, I'm gonna use the old sore roll cards. And so he instituted the roll system for the trip and it <laughs> went pretty successfully. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we utilize the roles in a modified way at our house. I would love to hear and see what you're doing at your house and how well that's working for you. All right. Uh, the next is involve your child in decision-making and problem solving. Because when you give kids choices, oh, when you, when you, when you give kids choices, you increase their sense of power. And so think about that when, um, uh, and I do this in a variety of ways. Uh, I, I ask my kids for ideas on how they're gonna overcome a problem. Or I'll, uh, they'll have made a mistake and I'll ask them, you know, what do they think an acceptable consequence is? And they help define their own, their own consequence. And sometimes when my kids are stuck, and they're really struggling to find a path forward, then uh, I'll, I'll create choices rather than just allowing them to make broad decisions or be part of the problem solving process. And narrow that down for them because when I narrow down the choices, it makes it easy for them to find a path forward. Uh, you know, um, think about a, you know, the, uh, the, the poem, uh, you know, uh, from um, Frost about the, you know, coming to a, uh, a, a division in the trail, and, and he took the trail less traveled by. And I think that for our kids, get, being at that trail where that trail diverges, and knowing what the options are and kind of talking through what those options are is a really great opportunity to talk about why we make decisions and what we hope to gain and get from that. Years ago, uh, I was uh, at, a, at, at a literal uh, junction in the trail and I pulled out the map and compass and you know we did another quick map and compass lesson then we talked about what would happen if we went this direction? What would happen if we went that direction? What if we chose the wrong direction? What would we do? And then the group made a decision about which direction we were going to go. Very, very powerful. And, and the more opportunities you can create where you allow them to make choices, the more powerful you're going to have your kids feeling. Uh, we encourage you to prepare your child for transitions. 
Uh, and in, in these strategies, you know, um, uh, one of them is to help them create a vision for what that transition might look like. You know, um, another one is to give them plenty of warnings. Um, what do most kids do in this world where they're so driven to the virtual? Well, they're spending a lot of time online. And so rather than abruptly ask them to come off of line, one of the things that I have enjoyed doing is asking kids to, to or my kids, hey, 10 minute warning. And that 10 minute warning means that I'm going to ask you to transition to something else. And then I give them another five minute warning. And that five minute warning, uh, again, reminds them that, okay, it's really coming. And then now they've been able to be eased into that transition. Transitions are one of those things that our kids really struggle with. In fact, we could do an entire workshop on how to manage transitions. Um, but uh, the, the two main things I encourage you to do here are one, help paint a picture for your kids as to what that transition might look like. And then two, give them lots of advanced warnings as you're moving into those transitions. Okay. I said that we were going to be talking about these meetings and uh, family meetings, and I, I, I love the family meeting, and I especially love it um, when you call a meeting to reinforce an accomplishment. Uh, so often, the, the time we spend in family meetings is focused on a negative. This young lady attended SOAR for many, many years, and one of the things that was so special about her was that she really loved the little victories that she had a chance to accomplish. I remember taking this picture uh, and I remember sending it to her parents and, uh, and just how proud and pleased they are. For me, this picture represents the pride that kids feel when they've accomplished something significant. Now, what this young lady has just done is she's crossed a two line bridge uh, successfully to that platform and she had struggled on that, that initiative. And so it was kind of a really big and wonderful deal. And we were really, really proud of her. So do not miss an opportunity to reinforce accomplishments of your kids. Uh, post them, uh, un unless doing so makes your, you know, makes your kids uh, upset or frustrated. Uh, but find things and ways to share with, uh, with them the remarkable opportunities that they have had a chance to participate in and the successes that they've had. Because when you reinforce accomplishment and you reinforce success, then what do you do? You create opportunities for more accomplishments and more success. All right. Um, in the family meeting, I love using a talking stick. Uh, lately at our house, it has been the talking, or the, the talking puggle. The puggle gets moved and you can only talk if you've got the puggle in your lap. Uh, one, uh, at one point, we made it really interesting. You actually had to call uh, Snuggles, the puggle, to actually come to you. And if she didn't come to you, you couldn't talk. That was abandoned after the first attempt. Uh, any item can be used. You know, you can, you can have something like, you know, uh, this, this is my little eyeglass holder. But you have to have this in your hands if you're the one who's going to be talking. Uh, but but this, what this does is it allows control to make sure that um, that people aren't talking over each other. And if you've got something to say, you know, it gets handed to you. Uh, you, one of the things that my kids did a couple years ago, we had a talking stick going and they didn't want to hear what we had to say. So they just kept handing the talking stick back and forth to each other. Uh, and may, and so I, I had to insert a new rule that, uh, kids could only hand the talking stick to an adult and adults could hand them to whoever they wanted. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the talking stick is a really effective way to help families keep from talking uh, over each other. Uh, we also instituted a rule that, um, that you couldn't filibuster, that you, you, you had to say what you had to say and no circle talk. Uh, my son uh, hijacked a meeting once and just would not give up the talking uh, stick and talked and talked and talked because I, I don't know what his hope was that, that, if he, that if he spoke long enough, we'd lose interest. But um, but we now have a three minute time limit and, you know, say what you need to say and move on and listen to each other. And we have found, we have found the family meeting and the talking stick to be absolutely critical to a good successful family meeting. Uh, allow your child to call a meeting. It isn't just the adults who say, all right, folks, we're calling a meeting. 
uh, let the kids call a meeting. And, and the reason we do that is again, uh, back to a previous slide, when you create opportunity, you create a sense of power, uh, you create choices, then you create empowerment. Um, and so uh, a, a family, any family member can call a family meeting for any reason. The family meeting is sacrosanct. It should not be arduous or long or, you know, particularly painful. It's just, you know, um, you know, call the meeting, identify the opportunity or the thing that it is that you want to discuss. Make sure that you're using a talking stick. Uh, talk about the uh, the item, and then everyone tries to come up with a solution, and then we 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 settle on a plan as a family, and then the meeting's over. Um, uh, I have had days when we have had three or four meetings in a day. I have had days when we have not had a meeting at all. Um, one of the things that we do at SOAR, however, that I love and wish that we had done it as a family more. Is the idea that every night we check in with each other. <clears throat> now we do at dinner, we play a little game, um, uh, you know, called Rose and Thorn or uh, the best, the best thing today or Thank You Circle uh, when we're doing our, our dinner time. Uh, and you know, invariably, we we always benefit from that that time and that opportunity. Um, and so, uh, so sometimes it's nice to come up with a way to formally end the meeting. And one of my favorites is I'm going to thank somebody for something I saw them do today. And then you have, you have each other thank one another. Um, I think it's also really important to use the full value contract. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about the full value contract. I've talked about the proposal system. Um, and, and this is this, the full value contract is essentially the family is, you know, the entire family is going to say something like this. Um, uh, what I respect about you, mom and dad, is that you always seem to have my best interest at heart. What I respect about my sister is that she um, she's fun and she listens to me. And then this is the important one. What I respect about myself is uh, that even though I get angry sometimes, I, I always come back and I'm willing to listen. Now, I just did that as if I were my son. Uh, sharing with my family, my full value contract. Th this is what I believe is wonderful about you and, and what I respect about you. This is what, what I respect about myself. And then one of my favorite things about the family is that we have fun and we laugh a lot. Um, so the next part of the full value contract is going to be what led to the particular misbehavior. Now, I wouldn't necessarily do that in a family meeting. That's a private discussion between you and, and the child that misbehaved. Uh, but what, what were the factors that led up to the misbehavior? Were there at any point ways that you, the, the child, could have climbed the accountability ladder and prevented the misbehavior from continuing? What are you going to do differently next time when you're faced with a similar set of circumstances that lead to feeling that way? And then the final piece is what consequences will you have if A, you successfully navigate those waters and avoid that, that negative behavior or if that negative behavior happens again? It, uh, I love the idea of consequencing positive results. Um, people, people strive for positive results. So, fair about uh, the full value contract, what I respect about others, what I respect about myself, what I respect about my family or the process, what led to the, to, to the behavior and what you can expect from me moving forward. I also am a huge believer of setting time goals. Um, now, what I put here is one of my favorite ways to do that. It's the time timer. Uh, this was developed by a mom of a, of a young man who grew up with learning disabilities and the kitchen timer was a real distraction. And so she created a visual way for kids to see time. Now I have used the time timer in a variety of ways. Uh, I, I have, I've had staff that were particularly ver verbose and, and wanted to talk and talk and talk. And I would set the timer for 10 minutes and say this, this meeting has 10 minutes. And when the 10 minutes is over, the meeting is over and, and made it so that everybody could see the, the meeting time and it, it would help keep us on task. The nice thing about the, the having time goals is that it's critical to being successful. Um, whether, whether it's you're, you're gonna give yourself 35 minutes to do a job or you plan to have made this phone call or sent this email or finished this project by Thursday at 3 p.m. Uh, they're the same kind of time goals and time goals 
and measurable ways to determine whether or not those time goals have been met are the critical aspect to developing a SMART goal. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, uh, SMART goals are specific, they're measurable, uh, there's an accountability piece, there's a time frame, uh, and you know, who, who's responsible for it. And so I, I really love the idea that, you know, that a goal is really nothing until it's been assigned to somebody, it has a, me a metric to determine whether it's been successful, and it has a time frame. All right, and this is our last slide today. Uh, develop a family constitution that helps govern expectations at home. Now, I have given an entire webinar on on the uh, on on the family uh, constitution, but I'm going to give you just a quick synopsis here. Um, the preamble, the family mission statement. At the Wilson household, the family mission statement is really simple: Wilson stick together. The non-negotiables. At our house, the non-negotiables are there's uh, no angry hands. Uh, we don't call each other out in public. Um, we will, if we're feeling angry or frustrated at any time, we can walk away as long as we commit to coming back to a situation. And we recognize that we have each other's best interests at heart. Uh, duties and responsibilities. And uh, in, in, in our house, we have, you know, keeping rooms clean, having fun, doing the dishes, making meals, and we rotate those responsibilities. Um, we do it a little, little, little differently than a, than a structured day-by-day -day routine. It's really, for us, it's more about opportunity. Who's doing what, when, well, what's the meal for that day? Who's best at cooking that meal? And we have a lot of fun with it. Um, Article three is the family meetings and the rules and expectations by which we negotiate and have those family meetings and what we hope to have come out of that. We also have a treasury and that treasury is, you know, basically I'll, I'll say, okay, kids, we've got a long, a fun weekend. This is the amount of money that we have to spend on that weekend. What are some of the things that you guys want to do? Let's make a priority list. And so, you know, um, a couple of years ago, we, I gave the, the kids an opportunity. I said, we can buy a pop-up camper or we can uh, rent a hotel for, um, for a week. And the kids wanted the pop-up camper so that we could, you know, they, they, their opinion was, well, we can use that for years and years. Uh, and so um, we have, in fact, had a chance to use that a few times this summer, and we've enjoyed it a great deal. But, but they had buy-in. They were the ones who helped make the decision as to whether or not we were going to use the family treasury in that manner. Um, I've talked about behavioral contracts. I think they're really important. I think that specific negative behaviors need specific behavioral contracts to help overcome them of those, some of those things. And, uh, and behavioral contracts, all we should have, these are the triggers. These are the way that I'm gonna overcome those triggers. This is how I'm going to ensure that I'm successful. This is why I want to be successful uh, and, uh, and find ways to move forward in the purposeful process. And then anything that I just said in this family constitution is certainly available uh, to be amended uh, because any good family constitution should, like our constitution, be a living, breathing document that changes and shifts based on the time frame of the family and how they need it utilized in the most specific way possible. So that is our uh, our uh, webinar for today. Next week. We are going to be looking, and we take a quick look here. Uh, next week's webinar is um, a titled, uh, uh, let's see, ne next week's video uh, is going to be on um, communication strategies. And uh, so we're excited about those opportunities. So. Are there any questions that anybody has or anything that they want to hear in the chat? We have a question. What if the citizen, what if the citizen kid refuses the constitution and its rules? Great question. And so um, Pierre, what, what we have done is um, we came to the process when, when we developed this constitution and we said, these are the non-negotiables. These are the things that you don't have a say about. Uh, because you know they're 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 so critical to our to us that we we very much these are these are being imposed upon you, all right. These are the laws of the land. Um, the remaining pieces of it 
are open for discussion and negotiation. And the more time that we have them uh, engage with us, and so if she's refusing uh, the Constitution and its rules, then ask her what she does believe is appropriate. And then, and then kind of see what you can, where, where do you have common ground and how can you move forward uh, in, a, in a thoughtful, purposeful way. Um, sometimes kids disagree just to disagree. And when I encounter kids like that, uh, I try and create very tight parameters by, by how far I'm, I will allow myself to be pushed. But then I also try and figure out why I can't say yes to some of the things that they're asking for. And so I create a, um, I create an opportunity where kids have heard, yes, that they, that they recognize that I'm invested and involved and participating in them in, in a thoughtful way that allows them to be successful. So uh, if you have more questions about that and you want to have a private conversation, I'm happy to do so. But I love it when kids refuse because it just gives me an opportunity to say, well, then what would you, what do you want to agree to? Uh, and, and, and lets us move in that direction. Are there any other questions or things that folks want to know? Well, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end the webinar. I do have some exciting news, a little teaser. Uh, in October, uh, one of the leading experts on uh, homeschooling is going to help, uh, we'll do a webinar on how to, you know, where, what can parents do to make virtual learning at home the most powerful it can be. Uh, and so if you have specific questions that you would like to have us ask Kathy Kuhl, uh, K-U-H-L, then please let us know, but I'm delighted to announce that she is very willing to do a, a webinar for us. So, with that being said, thank you again so much for joining us today. I hope you have a wonderful week. Stay safe, find ways to have fun and love each other. Bye-bye.